Well, the hits just keep coming out of Dallas. So, step number one was... Well, step number one would have been to fire the guy who just flamed down the first round of the playoffs, but that's not the way things are going to work, right? So, Mike McCarthy's rehired and done so very quickly, which is a whole other discussion. Well, I don't even know if it's possible to have another discussion about the screw-up in Dallas, but Mike McCarthy's retained. So, as I was telling you, the next elephant in the room is Dak Prescott and Dak Prescott's contract. It's, you know, it's been hanging around there for quite some time. There's other contracts that are up for grabs. This is why, so Mike McCarthy has another year. Um, I, have, I, give, I give up now. I am not going to predict whether Mike McCarthy stays on another year after that or not. I'm telling you right now, whoever the coach is in two years, they've got a bad team. If Dallas isn't lucky next year and stays completely healthy and everything works perfectly, they've got, they might have a bad team next year. But the, the, the bulk of what they have now, which you thought at one time was good unless you're in the playoffs, what they have now is going to be back next year. Then after that, it's all bets are off. All bets are off. Forget it. Windows slamming shut. It's over. It's over. It might be over now, to be honest. So what is hanging out there is the Dak Prescott con- contract. What is fascinating <laughs> is the similarities between Dak Prescott and Tony Romo. Their careers. It is it's remarkable how similar they are. Now, I don't think anybody would say, well, I think people would say, the, I know what you're going to say. The Tony Romo career statistically was very nice. The Tony Romo, Tony Romo is not a Hall of Famer. He might be a Hall of Famer as a broadcaster, but he's not going to be a Hall of Famer as a player. Statistically, it was a very good career, and he played on one really good team that was, you know, got a bad break from from going to a Super Bowl. Then there's Dak Prescott, who's had mostly a statistically good career. This past season was close to an MVP year, so it was his best year statistically. And he'll finish second in MVP voting. And his team was nowhere near making the NFC Championship game. So here's what ESPN is reporting now comparing the two. Why Dak Prescott has become the Cowboys' new Tony Romo. This is from Todd Archer of ESPN. The career arcs of Dak Prescott and Tony Romo have become so similar, they've essentially become the same quarterback. It's true. Tony Romo's playoff record, 2-4. and I don't even know what the other one was. I can't even remember the two. He was 2-4. and Dak Prescott's playoff record stands at 2-5. and Tony Romo had three chances to advance to an NFC Championship game, 2007, 2009, 2014. Dak Prescott's chance at a fourth try was wiped out by the Packers. He's missed out on chances in 2016, 18, and 22. That's the very reason they didn't make it this year. The coach should have been fired, but none of that stuff happened. Since 1980, you got to really nerd out now, but it's sort of it's playoff time. It's the it's the best time for football, so you can it's it's okay to nerd out some. Since 19, this is not a good stat. Since 1980, Ken Anderson is the only quarterback to be his team's starter for more consecutive seasons than Dak Prescott before going to a Super Bowl for the first time. He was in his 10th season as a starter when Cincinnati finally went to a Super Bowl. And I believe it was one of the greatest games of all time when San Francisco beat them. I don't know how, I can't remember how long it took Peyton Manning. He had won, Peyton Manning had won two MVPs before the Super Bowl of 2006. You know, then of course he went with Denver when he was really not much of a player. The point of this is that Dak Prescott is now. I, I, I think I think not just headed there. He is destined to be a guy that will have a long career with one team, never to see a Super Bowl. He's going to have a long career with one team. If you had to make a bet on it right now, you would make this bet. He's going to end up having a long career with one team. 
the most high-profile team, and never even beat an NFC Championship game. Yeah. Anybody want to bet against that at this point? I bet not. So then you go take it further with Tony Romo and Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott turns 31 in July. He's played every game this season for the first time since 2019. He led the NFL in touchdown passes. Um, he's had injuries, but this was he was incredibly healthy this year. He is about to. This is what ends the entire operation. He's about to enter the final year of a contract that will count $59.4 million against the salary cap of 2024. For those that don't know anything, the salary cap is a balance sheet that tells you each and every year how much each team can allocate towards salary. Sometimes they say they back end money to another year. They rearrange money, but it is a balance sheet of what a team, what the teams can spend. It's been going up some time because it's predicated on rights fees and merchandising and things like that. And of course, media rights fees have been going up. So the player, the salary cap's been going up. And it will continue to go up because the football business is so good. But that's what it is. So you only have X amount on paper to spend. And you can keep moving the money back and forward in other years, but sooner or later, it's just going to keep up eating up more of your balance sheet. Dak Prescott is about to eat up a giant chunk of the Cowboys balance sheet. He will be the highest in extending his contract, ESPN is reporting, will making make him among the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. But it would, if they back ended the money, move the money back and said, okay, by by the number, you're gonna make 40 million this year, then 70 the next, or whatever. They had the exact same issue with Tony Romo back in 2013. It's unbelievable how similar these guys' careers have been. They could not place the franchise tag on him. Franchise tag, you hear the term a lot. Franchise tag is an organization's ability to say, we hold you to this. We don't, you don't get to renegotiate, but we, put, we tag you with this means that you make the average of the five highest paid players at your position. That's what the franchise tag, I think it's five or ten, something like that. But it's an average of the highest paid players at your position. And you can do it one time. Dak Prescott has a deal that says you can't do that to me, and they can't trade him contractually. So Dallas could not put a franchise tag on Tony Romo because he did the same kind of contract, said, no, I'm never going to do that. He signed a six-year, $108 million extension through 2019. $40 million of the money was guaranteed. At the time of his signing, the $18 million annual average made Tony Romo the sixth highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Dak Prescott right now is going to be at number 10. So, worst case scenario, Dax Prescott's going to be one of the five highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL very soon, if not higher. ESPN seems to think Mike McCarthy was retained because of Dak Prescott. That Jerry Jones views the two of them as being a package deal. That he believes, now you, you can agree with this all you want, To be honest, just numerically, it did play out this way. Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, his time as owner of the Dallas Cowboys defined by Dak Prescott. It was defined by Tony Romo. Look what happened there. He got Tony Romo 2.0. He views his time as owner of the Dallas Cowboys tied to Dak Prescott's success. He looks at this and says... You know what? When Mike, when my mumbling Mike McCarthy took over, look what Dak Prescott did. He cut down interceptions. He was healthier. Uh, he was, you know, he was really good this year. There's no arguing that until the game, you know, they really counted. Um, so the thinking is that's why mumbling Mike still has a job. Is that Jerry Jones says, look what he did with Dak Prescott. We're going to keep Dak Prescott, which means this is the end of the Dallas Cowboys as a team in two years. Dak Prescott's going to be incredibly rich. He's going to be one of the highest paid players in the NFL. He's going to have a long-term contract with the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to be playing when they suck. Suck more. Um, And then mumbling Mike is here at least for another year because Jerry Jones views the two as one and the same. Here's a pretty decent explanation of all this stuff on ESPN. I think this is Adam Schefter. Just understand, 
it could be a really good team again next year during the regular season if they stay perfectly healthy. After that, forget it. It's all over. Going to resign him. I mean, th- th- these there aren't more than five guys better, definitively better than him. He's going to get the massive contract, right? Well, they have to do something to create cap space because right now he's scheduled to count for over $59 million against the salary cap. So if you want to have him go into the last year of his deal and then be not tagged and be able to leave in free agency, then, yeah, you're not going to do something. So you're going to try to work with him starting there to create some cap space. He's going to want to see this team improve. Quarterbacks do work with teams on restructuring deals, of course, that benefit them, but give their teams the needed cap relief that they need to bolster their roster that season and to kick the bill down the road. That's what Dak is going to try to do. That's what the Cowboys are going to try to do. He is going to be starting point A when it comes to trying to find more cap space while at the same time trying to cash in himself. And that's the problem that Sunday's game leaves everybody with, right? What do you do? Because nobody's stock is higher after that playoff performance. Okay, what that means, what he's saying is Jerry Jones is going to sit down with Dak Prescott and he's going to say, hey, look, man, you got to get some help around you. I mean, you can take all the money, right? You can beat me up today and you can take it all. You can be the, you can be Joe Burrow with an extra dollar if you want. And then, but that's not what Patrick Mahomes does. That's not what Tom Brady did. They want to spread some of the money out. And I'm sure Dak Prescott would probably do that. And he's going to say, hey, we got to, you got to, we're going to, Back end your contract. So take less now, Dak, so we can spread some money around, so we can make another great run at this and go all the way. Laugh all you want. Okay, that's fine. And I, and I suspect that's probably what's going to happen. Assuming Dak Prescott doesn't hold them hostage, assuming Dak Prescott doesn't want to go somewhere else, uh, he's going to say, yeah, yeah, old man, you're right. I, I, I'll, I'll take one for the team right now. But in three years, you're probably going to have to pay me like $400 million. Next year, Dallas has a chance to be pretty good again during the regular season. Nobody in their right mind would anticipate they do anything in the playoffs. There's no reason to believe that. There's no proof of that. You get that. After that, his bills are going to start coming due, and they're toast. That's it. Because they're going to have the same conversation with Micah Parsons. They're going to have the same conversation with CeeDee Lamb. So they're just going to have these superstars, and they're going to keep trying to talk them into paying the minimum, right? It's like your credit card and a minimum payment. We want to pay you just a little bit now so we can have some more money right now. But then two, three years from now, it's all going to be eaten up by three, four of these guys, and that's it. That's it. The window has will have completely slammed. They'll have no way to acquire really good players. There just won't be any money. So Jerry Jones, being the old man that he is, is betting on... This is why I think not hiring Bill Belichick was stupid. You really are... And you can make the, he's an old man, I don't know how long he's going to live jokes all you want. You really are now saying, you got one more year. This franchise has one more chance to to advance. Because after that... Because of the money, because of the economics, because of everything that goes into it. After that, the door slams shut. You are, you're not quite the Panthers yet, but they're going to be on their way. Now, poor Dak Prescott is poor. He's not, he's going to be rich. Um, He's going to be the quarterback of a horrible football team in two years. Three years. Really horrible. In three, bad in two, a chance to be good in one. That's life going forward. That's what they face. But if you want to know why Mumbling Mike was retained, he was retained to say, go get me one more good year out of Dak Prescott, and then he's just going to coast the rest of the way, and I'm going to sit in a rocking chair and feed the squirrels.